me and my shadow. Hey, AP Calculus AB students. I'm sorry, no more singing. No more singing. We don't. We won't want to alert the DMCA on that one. Welcome to another video. We're in topic 4.5 once again, related rates, example 11, and this is the finale. This is our final problem. It's been a long topic, and related rates is one of those topics that teachers can spend a lot of time on. And I've used to spend three, four days over this. We find out that, you know, on the AP exam, related rates just has a, a small intervention. It's really tied closely to the whole concept of implicit differentiation. And so I tend to probably go a little bit deeper with my discussion of related rates than what's needed on the AP Calc exam. But it's a wonderful umbrella of ideas that really shows you why and how calculus is really useful. So just like my song says, just like my Bitmoji says, me and my shadow, let's take a look at example 11. As you can see, the problem reads, suppose a six foot tall person is 10 feet away from a 10 feet tall lamp post. The person moves away at a rate of three feet per second. All the preliminary information that we need, we can dive right in and answer really two questions. The first question, at what rate is the length of the shadow changing? And I think it might be really important to take a look at this picture and make sure that we understand where the shadow is. Um, I've taught some students in the past where they weren't quite sure where the shadow is. So I'm going to use a pen and I'm going to highlight the area in a very dark, oh that's really dark, right? But the shadow would essentially be the length of that particular blop. And as you can see, that is labeled in the picture as X. So it's nice that we have a picture fully labeled in this case. All right, so what are we going to do about this picture or this setup? Well, a lot of great information is provided. We, we know that uh, this distance of the shadow is changing. We're going to call it X. The man is six feet tall. That's a constant. The light post is 10 feet uh, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, lamp post is 10 feet tall, and I might write the 10 here uh, rather than on top. And as you can see, if that light shines, the man is going to block the light, and boom, we have instant shadow, right? Let's see if we can straighten up that shadow a little bit. There we go. Yeah, okay, that's good enough. <laughs> so we have our shadow. Now, what we're going to do, well, we, we can always go back to our, our meat and potatoes where we can read or, or think about what is given in the problem. And the given is typically going to be the rate, the rate uh, of something that's changing. And we see that this says, the problem says the person is moving away at a rate of three feet per second. Now, we have to think about that a little bit. The man is moving away at a rate of three feet per second. Well, that rate that he's moving away is really affecting this part of the picture. And this is the part that I really want to stress because sometimes you have a canned drawing. You have a, a drawing that's already provided for you, maybe in a textbook, and we don't really want to use that particular constant just yet. And I don't think we want to use this 10 because if this man is moving, then this distance here is changing. And so I would like to call that something else, something that's a variable. And I'm going to just use D in this case. So if the man is moving away from the light post at a rate of 3, then we could say the derivative of D with respect to T is 3. And we would certainly use a positive 3. Now that being said, what we're trying to find is the rate of the uh, the length of the shadow change and that would be this length x change and so we are finding dx dt but we're going to find that specifically when this d is equal to 10. So that's where that 10 is going to come into play. Now we have our equation. If you're watching video 11 here it's probably likely you've caught some of my other videos over related rates. After all, there are 
well, there's 10 of them. And you'll see that most of those problems that are full-blown related rate uh, problems that we did are always scaffolded with these three words. I think it's a wonderful way to enter a related rate problem. Um, so for our equation, well, we've got something a little different here. We've got something that I don't think we've ever seen before. So what we've got here, if you take a look at the overall picture here, and let me see if I can draw this a little bit cleaner, you guys. I'm gonna have to move out of the camera's view here. So I'm gonna draw this, I'm gonna draw that, and then let's see, we draw that pretty close. And if I take this and sort of extract it from the picture as such, I know that I've got a measurement of 10 here, and I guess, hmm, what would I have along here? And you want to kind of be thinking about this a little bit. I know that we could call it 10 plus x, maybe, but we could also call it d plus x. And I think that's the route that we want to go. Because as this man is moving, both of these things are changing. They are variables. We have yet to take the derivative, so we haven't frozen time. Taking a derivative is like freezing time, and at that stage you can plug in any known values that were given, in this case d equal 10. Next, I'm going to have us take another look at another triangle. Let's draw this one here in purple. So I've got the man, the ground, and his hypotenuse. And if I extract that, I notice that it fits well, kind of snugly right in there, if I had drawn it a little bit better, right? And I can label 6 and x. And what I really want to get out of this is the fact that these two triangles are similar. So if you watched the video, for example, 10, we talked a little bit about similar triangles um, and how they play a role in solving certain related rate questions, particularly the cones. But in a shadow problem, the relate, uh, the uh, similar triangle relationship serves a greater purpose. It is actually going to be the equation that you take the derivative of. And that's kind of what separates a lot of shadow problems apart. So we can set this up a myriad of ways. Maybe I say the vertical side of the small triangle is to the vertical side of the big triangle equals the horizontal side of the small triangle over the horizontal side of the big triangle. And now I'm all set to go here. Now I've pretty much used up much of my space, right? So I, I could try to move these out of the way now because I don't, I don't need these anymore and I don't need this anymore. And so how about we just get rid of all that? Boom, disappeared. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and cross multiply. And in doing so, um, I can choose to distribute the 6 or not distribute the 6. How, how about I distribute it through? That, that might be a little bit easier. It works either way. If you want to combine some like terms, we could see that the 6x could subtract over to the right. At this point, you could say, yeah, I'm probably ready. I'll take my derivative now. So the derivative of 6d with respect to t is 6 times dd dt. And that would equal... The derivative of 4x with respect to t is 4 times dx dt. Now remember, you have the benefit of your find and your given here, so that pretty much lays out what direction you go next. You're going to find the dx dt knowing that the dd dt is positive 3. And, well, you know that d is 10, but it doesn't look like we need to use that 10. So in other words, the distance that the man is from the light source has no bearing in determining the rate at which the shadow is growing. So if we take this 6 times 3, which of course is 18, and divide by 4, we would get a simplified result of 9 halves. And we are measuring this as a distance, a change in distance. So we have feet for our distance units and seconds for our time unit. And that would answer part A. The man is moving, or the man's shadow, I should say, is changing or increasing by a rate of four and a half feet every second 
the moment that he's 10 feet from the pole, but any moment at all that he's walking from the pole, to be honest. All right, now we do have a part B that luckily is going to be able to be answered pretty quickly. You don't have to go back to the drawing board and, and redo your picture and redo your find given an equation. But this is always a, a bit bothersome to some students because they, they kind of misinterpret what this is saying. So it reads, at what rate is the tip of the shadow changing? And by tip, we're going to define that as this red dot. That's the very, very front end of the shadow. It's what would really be corresponding to his head. The tip of the shadow and the shadow are two very different things. And I know that that's a little bit hard to understand. The shadow is its own entity. As the man moves, it changes ever so you know, you've probably experienced walking um, at night along a sidewalk with street lamps, and you can kind of look and see how your shadow uh, reacts depending on how close you are to the street lamp and so forth. But the tip here is actually saying, what is the rate of change of this entire length? Because that's what comprises the tip of the shadow. The, 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 the end right here all the way back to the light source. Picture this little dot moving along, right? This is the tip of the shadow. It's always measured back to that light source, right? Even if we continue to go to the right. So what we're doing in this problem is really we're finding the rate of change of the entire bottom, which is the derivative of d plus x with respect to t. So we know a derivative rule that says we are allowed to split apart a sum into two separate derivatives. And when you look even closer at this, you will soon realize that the dd dt and the dx dt are two known things that we just found in the previous problem. We have dd dt as being positive 3, and of course our dx dt is 9 over 2, and so we could go ahead and add those together. 6 halves plus 9 halves is 15 halves, and then we can attach our label and get feet per second. And, and I hope that it seems logical that the answer to part b is a bit larger than the answer to part a, because the rate of change of this entire amount seems like it's got to be something that's kind of undergoing a greater amount of change based on the light source and the angle that it's making and whatnot. So if you ever encounter a shadow problem, and they're not super popular on the AP exam, there was a there was a shadow problem that appeared about three about 2017 um, on a multiple choice um, part of the exam. So they're they're out there, they're fair game, but they typically don't vary much. They they use a setup similar to this and they'll typically use that similar triangle as the main equation. I hope this video helped as well as the other videos in the related rate uh, uh, topic and uh, we have lots of other videos in store for you for units four and on up all the way to the end of the course so you're welcome to check those out and uh, we thank you for joining.